this is Ashley from Florida Shelly and today we are going on an ancient sand dune hike. Our hike today starts at Juno Dunes West. From the kiosk adjoining the parking area, the Sawgrass Nature Trail, a concrete wheelchair accessible path, leads you into the Vault Ten Scrub Forest on a distinctly down, downhill slope. All around you are the typical diminutive oaks of the scrub, sand live oak, Chapman oak, myrtle oak, and silverly blue saw palmetto. There are shells on both sides of the sidewalk of what used to be. Still connected. Hmm. This one has calcite growing on it. Very cool. The Palm Beach County Natural Area Systems protects historic native ecosystems and their biological diversity. The natural areas are open to the public for passive resource-based recreation, environmental education, and scientific research. The county carefully designed the parking lots and trails so they have minimal impact on native ecosystems. The construction of public use facilities occurs in previously disturbed areas. The parking lot for the Juno Dunes West Track is located in the disturbed scrub area created by filling and leveling associated with the construction of a lift station. So as the forest is tall enough to block our view, the trail reaches a long boardwalk. Between the swales of scrub is a thriving basin marsh, thick with Virginia willow. Crickets kick up a persistent chorus. Royal ferns rise out of the dark water shaded by wax myrtle. Some common birds that are found in this nature preserve are osprey, turkey vultures, killdeer, and little blue herons. Reptiles you can find here are gopher tortoise, tortoises, black racer snakes, green anoles, the lizards, six-lined race runner, another type of lizard, Mammals that live here are North American river otters, Eastern cotton-tailed bun-buns, bobcats, and raccoons. Insects are Halloween pennant. It's like a type of dragonfly. Then we have Sonata, which is a butterfly. Great Southern white, it's another butterfly and the Eastern Lubber Grasshopper. So 
So common plants found in this area are fetter bush, silk bay, large flowered rosemary, painted leaf, bahoon, beggar ticks, and ball moss. In 1992, Palm Beach County purchased 148 acres from Juno Associates LTD Limited. In 1995, the county purchased 334 acres from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Additional land purchases and lease agreements increased the size of the site to 569 acres by 1999. State preservation 2,000 matching funds in the amount of 7,000, I'm sorry, 7,453,341 dollars in 1993. were provided by Florida Communities Trust for the accusation of a portion of the site. The boardwalk ends at a sheltered observation deck. From here you can look to the east and see a similar shelter atop. Atop the Atlantic Coastal Ridge on the far side of US-1, that's the landmark for the east side of the natural area. So right, see it, there it is, right there. And behind it is the ocean. West side. Head down the Atlantic Coastal Ridge on the far side of US 1. That's the landmark for the east side of the natural area. Head down the steps. Beyond the shelter, the trail becomes the Scrub Oak Hiking Trail, which start out, starts out as a trudge through soft sand. And that it is. <laughs> this is where the huffing and puffing starts. <laughs> Look for delicate four petal pawpaw, an endangered species that sports slender ivory blooms in spring. So it is not spring yet. It's currently winter. But we'll find our best, we'll try our best to find one. Noticeable clumps of Florida rosemary rise from the brilliant sand in the undulating dunes on both sides of the trail. Hog plum sprawls across open sand as well. Tall pines mark the transition into pine flatwoods as the trail drops downhill. And downhill will be straight up ahead just a little further. The pines offer some relief in the form of shade. An oak toad hops away. The sweet aroma of Tar flowers is in the air as you reach a lovely array of flower blooms on a variety of plants, including yellow eyed grass, St. John's wort, and corpus.
The earliest accounts of the natural area come from U.S. Army topological engineer reports made during the Second Seminole Indian War in the 1840s. During the late 1800s, the short-lived Celestial Railroad ran through the eastern portion of the natural area on its way from Jupiter to Lake Worth. Major changes took place in the natural area during the 1960s. In response to a mosquito population explosion, the county's Mosquito Control Department dug ditches throughout the area. Wetland water levels dropped, salt water replaced fresh water, and the sawgrass marshes evolved into mangrove swamps. Juno, B, Juno Dunes Natural Area. It's a mosaic of sand ridges covered with dwarf oak scrub intersected with tidal swamp, pine flatwoods, and basin marsh habitats. This natural area is part of a system of natural areas protected to maintain the diversity of biological communities and species in Palm Beach County. The natural areas are open to the public for educational and passive recreational use, such as hiking, bird watching, and nature photography. Juno Dunes West Track contains many types of habitats, so the plant life is quite varied. Common plants include the sand live oak, saw palmetto, silk bay, giant leather fern, and gopher apple. Now usually when I hike this trail, right here where the um, ruts are rather deep, is where this section gets flooded on a normal basis whenever we have a lot of rain. But <laughs> what everybody does is just kind of walk around it, as you can see right here, trying to stay on the path as much as possible so we don't ruin any of the nature. Sometimes you can't help it, you do have to walk a little bit more over. But for times like right now, it's not too bad. They just recently um, took a bulldozer, several obviously, and they kind of cleared out everything. We have an invasive uh, species here called the love vine, and it basically strangles plants. Um, I am 100% positive. Yep, there's one right here. This one's dead. It's not a very good example but this vine suffocates all the, the wildlife so or not wildlife the plants so it helps them get rid of it because it was literally over everything and then also if there's ever a fire back here this helps maintain fires it from spreading so quickly so now we have two options we can go straight which will lead us to the water, to the intracoastal. Or we could go this way, and then that loops back to the parking lot. I think today, since, since it's such a nice day in Florida, which is very rare, we're gonna go straight. And you can see that we've had a lot of water. Not too recent, but about a month ago, two months ago, it was just pouring every single day. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. And I do shelling videos on the beach and in dry land. 
I also like to discover other things that are all shell related, which is basically everything in Florida. <laughs> so like today, this park is right across the, well, I guess the street. It's a two park situation here. The road splits in half and this is on the beach. Um, but once upon a time, 200 million years ago was the last time this area was underwater. So there are shells here. I love making dry land shelling videos because it's something that's very untouched. Definitely in the paleo world is more common. But and I think unless you really search for paleo videos and fossil videos, you won't come across the shell fossils as much. So I like to do both to, I don't know, just to understand it all and discover it. And oh, this is the love vine. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, And then I also do videos, um, not tutorials, just fun tutorials. I like to do like arts and crafts. I like to paint and do resin and poly polymer clay and make shell animals. <laughs> I'm very artistic. And I love giving you guys easy tutorials, even though it's some are very easy. Okay, so we have another intersection here. This way is another way out of the park that'll put you on Donald Ross Road. This is the way we just came from, the parking lot. That is on US 1, US Highway 1. We are going this way, because this is the way of the path. Well, you can go all ways, but this is the best way because at this end, we will come to an observation deck. Ooh, look at all these shells. <laughs> in the intracoastal and talk about shell fossils there's a ton there now because i'm talking so much chances of seeing any wildlife are very slim to none so now that we're in the pine forest i am going to stop talking so much so we can just take in the nature and hopefully uh see some wildlife Let's put it right there. Done. Oh my God, that looks like an old shell. Like maybe an olive or something. I apologize for the ruffling of papers because I am reading to you as I walk. <laughs> the primary purpose for acquiring Juno Dunes natural area was to preserve the largest tract of Atlantic coastal ridge scrub left in Palm Beach County. Scrub communities usually contain sand pines. The trees reach 65 feet high. And are the tallest features in the scrub. There are very few sand pines on this site. This may be due to the frequent fires that swept through the area. Hello. The trees require periodic fires to regenerate. 
It takes nearly 10 years for the replacement stand of sand pines to mature and begin producing new seeds. Fires occurring every several years kill the trees before they mature, removing seed sources for future generations. not a turtle hole. It's odd. Look at all the shells. <laughs> Look at all of them. And you can definitely find shark's teeth anywhere in Florida too. It's just a matter of looking for them. Here's an olive. Another olive that's right here. Well, that's a big one. We got a bunch of uh, spectral bittersweets here. And you can tell that this is from this area because in Palm Beach County, the spectral bittersweets, the round shells that look like this are extremely common in this area and they're really hard to find like anywhere else in the world actually Looks like a wildlife trail right there. Look at this love vine. It even works its way up these trees. It's all the way on the ground. It's just suffocating everything. Well, it's too far dense to remove it by hand. It can absolutely be done, but. Not for a cost. And here's a little swampy area. Looks like somebody's been rooting around. Not too recently, but definitely has been. So every time I get to a shelly area, this isn't too shelly, but it's just sandy, and I do see some shells. I do like to look down, slow down and look down because I'm looking for that Megalodon in Spanish de Blooms. <laughs> but I won't bore you all with that because I don't think there's uh, a, too much of a chance right here unless we've had recent waterfall, which the water hasn't been that recent. Here's one of the flowers that was on our list. Oh, never mind. It was not on the list. Never mind.
This shady oasis is home to endangered four petal pawpaw. This plant is only found in Palm Beach and Martin counties. There are more than 200 four petal pawpaws recorded on this site. The creamy white flowers bloom in the spring and give way to yellow fruits, which are eaten by gopher tortoises, raccoons, and possums. The ground and trees of the hammock are covered by a variety of unique plants. Epidites, which are air plants such as great wild pine and ball moss, grow along the tree limbs. So ball moss is very, very abundant from about South Carolina on. And you've seen it in probably more places than you remember. Now, other air plants are talking about like this type of tree. I don't see any. I hear a woodpecker. Somebody's very busy back there. So, I know there's been air plants in this tree before too. I guess like right now they're just not in there. Hello. <laughs> oh, look at these shells. Look at this. There's the intracoastal. We're gonna walk a little bit closer to it in just a second though. That's not really a real path. I think a lot of people have created it. So we're gonna try to stay off it. There it is again. Must not be air plant. Oh, there's the ball moss. That is a type of air plant, and in order to survive, it takes some nutrients through what you see. It has no roots. Now, if you have seen any of my other YouTube videos, you know I love air plants. So, I always look forward to seeing them, and in every video, I always point them out. It looks like somebody had a, the county had a tractor and they backed it up right here. Look at all these shells. And I don't want to take the shells from here because I don't want to ruin the environment. But we can definitely look at them. But as we get closer, we'll be able to see them a little bit better. This looks fresh. Okay, and the bag you go. Or my, my uh, my leggings. <laughs> so this is a pretty neat spot right here. We're almost to the intracoastal. We're about halfway through our entire hike. You guys have been champs for sticking with me this long. Look how beautiful that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's go up.
So I thought I'd point out to you guys that there is an osprey nest up here and there is actually an osprey in there. No, it's a little too far away to see if that's the baby or the mama. Uh, but the bird looks fairly decent size, so it could go either way. It's pretty neat. Okay, so as we just exited the boat launch area, if you walk right over here, the path continues. And you have wildlife trail, <laughs> a humongous picnic table, <laughs> and another picnic table with a lizard that is eating a dragonfly. Okay. <laughs> Look at this beautiful sunflower. Winter in Florida and we have sunflowers. <laughs> Gotta love it.